There are a gazillion sellers that use Square to power their food and beverage business. Okay, maybe not a gazillion, but there are a lot. And if you're looking to build an app for one of the many Square sellers in the restaurant space, you're going to need to get familiar with the Catalog API. As a developer, the Catalog API is your window into all the items that a business sells. So for restaurants, that means all of the food and drinks that they offer on their menu. In this video, we're going to take a look at how a catalog can be structured for a food and beverage seller. And we'll also go through some common API calls so you can see exactly how you can collect all of the data necessary to build a super sleek order ahead app. First things first, we need to understand how a seller's menu is structured. Sellers can use the Square Seller dashboard or point of sale to build out their menu. And it's our job as developers to be able to query for all the data they input here. For this video, we're going to use an example of a small restaurant that sells burgers. When it comes to food and beverage sellers, there are four main catalog object types that are most commonly used. First, and most importantly, is items. These are the food items that the restaurant is selling. So for our burger joint, the items might look something like this. Most restaurants are also going to want to add pictures to represent their menu items. Those pictures are stored as image objects. To make navigating through the menu easier for customers, a restaurant may want to organize their menu into groups. For that, we have the category type. For this menu, let's categorize the items into burgers and sides. Finally, customers are going to want to customize their order to fit their preferences. For that, there's the modifier type. Our burger joint is going to offer customers the ability to choose how they'd like their burger cooked and what toppings they would like. For sides, the restaurant offers a choice of dipping sauces to add. Gotta have that garlic aioli. All of these customizations are represented with modifiers. Now that we know how the menu is structured, we can start to query for all of this data to display it in our order ahead app. So first, let's try to recreate this page where we list out all of the menu items and separate them by category. In order to do that, we need to make a call to the search catalog objects endpoint and specify that we only want objects of type item, image, and category. I know we talked about modifiers as well, but since we aren't going to use them on this page, we don't need to query for them here. So let's run this request and see what we get back. The response here is essentially a JSON representation of the seller's menu. All the data we need to construct this page in our app is present in this response. So going through this, you'll see that we have all of our items. We've got our cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger, and so on. Each of these item objects includes the name and description of the item. Also in this object, you'll see there are arrays of image IDs and category IDs. These correspond to the images and categories associated with the item. And if we scroll down further in the response, you'll see here's that category with the matching ID, and here you can get the category name. Similarly, we have the image with the matching ID, and here you can get the URL of where the image is hosted so you can display it in your app. The last thing to note is that we want to display the price information for each item. If we take a look back at our cheeseburger item, you'll notice that the pricing information is within this item variation data. Item variations represent specific items to be sold, and every item includes at least one variation. An example where you might see this is if a restaurant sells drinks in different sizes. The item could be lemonade, and the item variations could be small lemonade, medium lemonade, and large lemonade. Naturally, each of these would have different prices, and that's why you'll find the price data on the variation, not the item itself. For our burger, it only comes in one variation, which by default is called regular. In the food and beverage space, you may not see multiple item variations very often, but it is still important that your app accounts for them. The second part of our app is that when a user clicks on a menu item, they're taken to this item details page where they can pick things like their toppings and temperature. If you recall from earlier, these are the modifiers. So how do you get all of that modifier data? Well, for that, you can use the retrieve catalog object endpoint. All you have to do is pass the ID of the item we're interested in, which we have from our previous search catalog objects call, and then make sure that you set include related objects to true. This will give you all the modifier data associated with the item. If we open up the response and scroll down to related objects, you'll see we have our burger toppings and all the toppings are listed here. Now all you have to do is iterate through this list and display all the toppings as a checklist. One thing to note with modifiers is that a seller can indicate the maximum number of modifiers that can be selected. So for example, you'll see for our burger temperature, the selection type is single, meaning that only one choice can be selected. 
And this makes sense because you can't have a burger that is medium rare and also well done. So this will be something you'll want to account for in your implementation as well. Understanding how to query a seller's catalog is a great skill to have as a Square developer. To help these concepts set in, I recommend playing around in the Seller Dashboard and the API Explorer. You can use the Seller Dashboard to create different items, images, modifiers, etc. And then you can use the API Explorer to query for different objects and get a better sense of how everything is organized. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.